Hey everyone, I'm Dan. I'm Elisa. And this is RJRPG Life. If this is your first time stopping by our channel, we are a couple that plays video games together. together. It's nuts. And separate. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, we love JRPGs. We love, I love more than JRPGs. That's all she plays, but eh, pretty much. Know. <laughs> but we want to take you along this journey with us to fill our collection, to play some games, to see if we like some games. We do it through yard sales, through quick flips, through offer ups, through trades. And uh, because of that, and because of all y'all subscribing below, if you haven't already, we hit a thousand subscribers recently. Hooray! Hooray! Huge deal. Thank you so much. And uh, the next step, maybe we can get to 1500. Yeah. Yeah. On today's video, we're going to do a collection tour of our Vita system. Yes, the and mighty games, Vita. And special editions, and limited run, and whatnot. Yep. A lot of everything. So stay tuned for that. We're going to share it all with you and go over some of our must-haves that we think you should get and play. And in the end of the video, we're going to go through what top five games are most valuable on the Vita. So stay tuned for that. Until then, let's check it out. So let's start with fighting games. The Vita actually ported some of the better ones, you know, the Mortal Kombat's, the Blaze Blues, the Dead or Alive's, the ones that everybody knows and trusts. And honestly, the Blaze Blues are amongst our favorite to play on this system. Obviously they have the anime styling, which is really what we're attracted to. We don't play a lot of fighting games, but if we do, we'll pick up one of these Blaze Blues and uh, go head to head and see who can die the quickest. So here are the puzzle games on the Vita, and uh, there's some pretty good ones. Tetris is decent, uh, it plays just like any other Tetris, but the standout for sure is definitely Touch My Katamari. If you're not familiar with the series, this is a game that's uh, very weird. You are the prince, and uh, your job is to pick up all of the things that were scattered around the world by the king. And uh, you gotta pick them up, roll them up, anything from paper clips all the way up to cows, and then kick them back up to space, and the king makes them a planet. So. Highly recommended, this game is great. So here are some assorted action games on the Vita, and there are a good amount of them. And some of them you'll recognize as AAA titles from home consoles like God of War, Assassin's Creed, you know, the Metal Gear series, some of the Ninja Guidance, and some of them are unique to the console. That you, if you really want to play them portable, you have to get them on the Vita. Uh, Ages of Earth was a Vita exclusive. Uh, the Uncharted game is actually really great on the system. It gives you unique touch controls and it utilizes some of the features that the Vita had that no other console had. The back touch screen and uh, it really takes advantage of them pretty darn well. I can recommend you playing it on this system. Next up is Survival Horror. We have Yomawari, Silent Hill Book of Memories, which is an exclusive to the Vita. Deathmark, and the one I'm most excited for is Corpse Party Blood Drive. So uh, this game is actually a direct sequel to a visual novel style game on the PSP, but I believe you can download it digitally. So this takes place in an anime style world where you're playing as a Japanese student and you're trying to survive. So looking forward to that. Can't wait to play through that. Here are all the LEGO games on the Vita. And guess what? They're all on the 3DS as well. Hooray! Here are the racing games on the Vita, and I'll tell you what, the Vita does it very, very well. This version of Ridge Racer on this console is probably one of my favorite ways to play it. Not only is it mobile, but the physics engine, just the the graphics everything works just as it should and that would be if there's one racing game the one to pick next up we have some 3d and 2d platformers on the vita and these are some of the greatest pickup and plays for any handheld and uh, you'll notice some of them are on multi-platforms like rayman obviously little big planet was very popular on the ps3 this these all play great on this console Sly Cooper Collections and Thieves in Time, also great games. The standout to us is the Epic Mickey game. So here's the thing about Epic Mickey. It's rumored to have been only a pack-in for the Mexico demographic and uh, 
So what you see here is a PAL case. It has a different language on the front. Our actual cartridge in it is NTSC and it's English. So it's really odd. It's actually really hard to find and it's becoming more rare and expensive as time progresses. So here's our simulation collection. We have Minecraft, which needs no introduction, Terrarium, and Farming Simulator. That's kind of like Harvest Moon, right? Here's our visual novel games. We have Chaos Child, Steins Gaze, and Psychopaths, Punchline. All of these games should have animes to go with them. Once I finish my 200 hour JRPG, these are right up my alley. Speaking of visual novels, we have the Danganronpa series along with the Notary Games 999 trifecta of games. These are kind of a mix of adventure, but also mystery and a little bit of visual novel elements, and we're really excited to play the Nonary Games um, and all those. So Nonary Games, Virtuous Asteroid, and Zero Time Dilemma are all part of the same trilogy. And the one we played before that was 999 for the DS, and these are great murder mysteries. Um, another kind of standout in this stack is that the Danganronpa V3, we were lucky enough to pick that one up when it was maybe 30 bucks, 35 bucks at the store. So that one's shot way up and uh, it's becoming very hard to find. Next up we have the Rhythm Games on the Vita, and uh, the Miku Games are the standout for us. We've had a lot of experience with those in a lot of different systems. We love the character. We went to one of her concerts. If you get a chance to do that, by the way, make sure you check it out. But uh, the Persona 4 Dancing All Night game is nice. This actually comes in a couple different uh, versions, which we'll show you in later in this video. But also, if you want to check out Elisa's Persona Collection video, it'll go a little bit more in depth on how many times they released that game. So next up we have a category that is known as Otome, and what Otome is, is these are dating sims. Basically, you play the role of a girl, and you have a lot of different choices in boys, and you take whichever choice you want. So uh, yeah, Elisa, this one's all you. So the Otome series, which I believe Otome means maiden game? So I, I guess this one's on me. I'm ready for some love triangle drama and romance. How romantic. Speaking of romance, next we have the shooter category. Uh, amongst these are Borderlands 2, which has obviously been on a lot of systems. It plays all right on the Vita. It's definitely doable, it's just a very low frame rate. Uh, Killzone's obviously one of the best on the console, highly recommended, and you get twin sticks nonetheless. It's just fantastic. And then a weird one to talk about real quick is Galgun. The M is on the cover for a reason. This is a game where you are focused on things other than shooting guns. Let's just say that. So real quick, here are the sports games for the Vita. And uh, I love Hot Shots Golf World Invitational. That's one I can highly recommend if you're a fan of golf. But the one that really stands out in this list is MLB 15 The Show. So this is an empty case, and it was sold this way because it has a digital download code in it, which is expired, obviously. But in order to complete our Region 1 US retail release set, we had to get this. So here it is, and it's not cheap either. Here's the Hyper Dimension Neptunia series. It's an RPG series not meant to be taken seriously at all. There's a lot of fan service and the series is based off of console wars. So the different regions of the world are based off of uh, a play on uh, console systems like the Xbox, the Wii, PlayStation. So PlayStation, the Wii, Leanbox. And then um, there's a couple other games, um, Neptunia, Producing Perfection is a rhythm game, and then Neptunia U is in the style of a Dynasty Warrior game. Next we have some of our non-retail games on the Vita, and this is a mix of some that we picked out on purpose, like As Divine Hearts, 
Ray Gigant, and you know, One Way Heroes. Some of those RPGs that were only digital that games like Limited Run decided to release physically. And then the rest of them are all blind box pickups like Salt and Sanctuary, Factotum 90. Basically, everything that's not an RPG was a blind box, which is pretty cool. There's also some from Fangamer, like The Undertale. And then East Asia Soft made Rainbow Skies and One Way Heroic, so it's really cool that some of these companies are still making physical copies of games that you really can't get anywhere else. Next we have a random assortment of our import games. These are all obviously Japanese, and uh, we find these locally or in Tucson or at Bookman's and we pick them up because they're there. You know, we don't really play a lot of them. Maybe Darius Burst, that's actually pretty good because it's a uh, shoot 'em up or maybe J-Stars you could use as a good fighter, but the CL No Surges are nice because they're basically sequels to the R No Surge and they're all in that same kind of umbrella. For some reason, Airship Q is all over Phoenix and we see it all the time, even though it's Japan-only game, so it's pretty neat to add some of these random Japanese games to our Vita collection. And finally, the RPGs of the PS Vita. So the notables for me personally is going to be Child of Light, which is in a style of a storybook. All the dialogue is rhyming. And then we have um, Digimon Cyber Sleuth. I've played a little bit of that. It's got a bit of a Pokemon element, but it's a bit more mature. Um, I really enjoy Dragon's Crown. It's a Vanillaware title. And we have two copies in there so we can play multiplayer. And um, if you're familiar with Vanillaware's artwork, their character design is very... Um, exaggerated on their character model, especially the sorceress. And we have more RPGs. Of course we do, it's the Vita. It was packed full of them. So in this list, some of my favorites are Odashika, which is technically a region free RPG, but uh, we count it. And then another one of my favorites, it's just a classic, it's Final Fantasy X. Being able to play this portably was absolutely amazing and uh, the Vita did it very, very well. Final Fantasy X-2 was also real good. Not as good as X, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. This is, however, a little bit of a debatable topic in our household. I like it a little more than Elisa does. Final Fantasy X was excellent, but however, Final Fantasy X-2, they lost me on the dress fears. I'm all for girl power, but when it feels like it's forced, not about it. Plus, Yuna not being a summoner anymore, and she's got this Tomb Raider vibe, eh. Some of the other notable games on this list for me is Mary Skelter, which is a dark twist on fairy tales. I'm all about that. Uh, we have Persona 4 Golden. Of course, I love that. If you want to see more about um, Persona, I have a Persona video that you guys can check out later. And then two other Vanillaware titles. We have Odin Sphere and Muramasa. There's also Gravity Rush. Played a bit of that. Um, if you have motion sickness, steer clear of it, but I enjoyed it. And for the last group of RPGs, we have a lot of mix of things. So Utawari Numono, those have come out in new systems, uh, but those were first on the Vita when we experienced them. And then there's E Celseta, World of Final Fantasy. Uh, some unique ones that played through that we enjoyed were Trails of Cold Steel. Played a lot of this one and it's very, very, very long and there are four in the series, five soon. Um, very, very long RPGs, but you know, pretty good. And then a unique one to this series is Tales of Hearts R. If you want to play this Tales game, you can only play it on the Vita. So get it before it goes up. Now on to special editions. Here we have Yi's Origin from Limited Run. We were happy to get this at an expo two years ago. Uh, Yi's Memory of Celseta, the big box edition, and Yi's 8 Lacrimosa of Donna. This game's been great. We've been playing it on Switch because we don't want to open this version. Next special editions, we have Atelier Esha and Logi Plus, and we have Atelier Shelly Plus. Both of these are sealed special editions. We obtained them from a local collector that was looking to uh, clear out some of her collection. And then we have the Trails of Cold Steel big box. What's unique about this one is you can actually fit Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 inside the box. Next up we have the Senra Kagura series. We have 
uh, Shinobi Versus and Espel, and we also have Bon Appetit. This series, um, if you're not familiar with it, it is a very, very lewd and fan servicey brawler game. It's kind of like a Dynasty Warrior game, but pretty perverted. It's awesome. Here we have a few more, She Ran the Wanderer, God Wars, and Steins Gate. All of these have been remade on new devices like the Switch and PS4, but it's great to have these sealed for our Vita collection. And some other sweet special editions, Reverie, Operation Abyss, Conception, and Axiom Verge. Reverie is pretty neat because they're trying to do kind of what Earthbound's doing, and uh, they do it pretty well. It's a fun little short RPG, and Axiom Verge, everybody knows, is a multi-platform hit of uh, platformers. Here's my favorite special editions, the Persona series. So we have Persona 4 Golden, and this is the Solid Gold Edition. And it's factory sealed still, so I don't know if I'll ever open it, but I like it sealed for now. And then the other two are the dancing games. We have the Japanese edition of Persona 3 and 5 for Dancing All Night, and that one includes a really cool soundtrack. And then the last one is Persona 4 Dancing All Night and it has a cool carrying case within it. It's also sealed. Here's the last bit of our special editions. We have the book from Corpse Party. This is the Grimoire, which is part of the special edition that we don't have, but a collector of ours threw it in with us when we were making a purchase. We have a Bad Apple Wars and then Yomawari Night Alone. Now onto the consoles. This is actually my original daily driver, the 3G Wi-Fi edition. This is the OLED version one model. I've been playing this thing for many years and it's held up great. And then we've also got it here displayed on the PS Vita dock. This is a pretty sweet little accessory that is very, very hard to find nowadays. So this here is my daily driver. It's the black slim model. Uh, there weren't cool colors out at the time when we initially bought ours, but later on we picked up the blue slim uh, PS Vita for only $40 on OfferUp. This metallic red one is a really cool pickup. We asked the best man from our wedding on his trip to Japan to pick this up for us. It is a metallic red and it is beautiful. I love white special edition consoles, especially when they're super clean. This Assassin's Creed Liberation 3 console just stands out, and getting a complete in box like this is awesome. Next is one of the favorite consoles in our collection, and this one Elisa bought for me for my birthday a few years back, and this is the Final Fantasy X X2 Special Edition Japanese exclusive console. It's gorgeous, and the box, I mean, look at all this art. They really, really went overboard with this, and I'm so happy that they did. Inside the special edition box is a two-pack of the 10 and 10 2 game physical editions. So a box in a box here, this has incredible artwork, obviously. It's just in perfect condition, straight from Japan. And then inside you'll see there's two cartridges here, and uh, we'll take those out real quick and show you. It's all white covers, just really, really impressive, real clean, and then the back has full art on it. It's just, just gorgeous. I'm so, so happy to have these in our collection, and uh, they look great on the shelf. And here's the console from inside the box, and look at this thing. I mean, it's the cleanest white slim model ever. It's beautiful. And the back, it's a shame there's not more art than just what's on the back, but this art is still incredible. Here's the top five most expensive games on this console that we own. This is Arno Surge Plus. It is actually loose. We have a replacement case for it. Uh, otherwise, it would be much higher on the list. And we actually got this for $5. Number four on our list is Mary Skelter's Nightmares. It is also factory sealed. I actually have a digital copy on my Vita. We downloaded that before we ended up picking up this physical copy.
Number three on our list is Rose in a Twilight. We also have the soundtrack that comes with the game. It is open, so we'll be able to play that and enjoy it at some point. Second game on our list is Yee's 8 La Cremosa of Donna. It is factory sealed. It's a pretty sweet special edition. Um, not sure when we're going to open this or if we're going to open it, but it's, it's pretty awesome to have it factory sealed. And last, the number one in our collection is Persona 4 Golden, solid gold edition. It is factory sealed. We obtained this locally from a collector that was also looking to get rid of some of his inventory. And we got this for a fraction of the price. And it's just gone up in value. Probably gonna keep it factory sealed. It looks so nice in our collection on the shelf. So that was our Vita collection. Comment below, let us know what your favorite Vita games are, what your favorite part of our collection is, or maybe what we're missing. Yeah, is well, there something we need to get from Limited Run? Or one of those other companies that does limited Vita games? Yeah, there are over 1,200 Vita games and <laughs> options, physical releases. That's a lot. I think there's 1,300 total, but that's all-inclusive of all regions, all languages, digital and not. Yeah, East Asia Soft did a lot, Play Asia did a lot. There's so many companies out there that just keep rolling them out, and it's too much to keep up with. That's why we focused on what we did. So, thank you again for watching. And remember, in the end, when you have a giant Vita collection, the couple that collects together stays, stays together. together. Take care. We'll see you next time.